Um, when when Hunter was asking you questions about listening to the symphony and, and building the first speakers that you built and why, if you felt something was missing um, in the speakers that were around before you started building your clip horns, and I just wanted to, for you to kind of tell that in a way that maybe a lay person could understand what was missing as far as the way it sounded to you. Did it sound? Let's see what was missing. Yeah. Uh, part of the tonal range and the purity. Uh, what's missing in a clip horn is the uh, distortion. Uh, in other words, the uh, what was missing in the uh, uh, early speakers was the free, uh, lack of freedom from distortion. In other words, something that was there that should not have been. It wasn't something that was missing, it was something that ought not to have been there. So the horn was more efficient, so there was less distortion in the clip horn. Right. Now why, why wasn't anybody else using a horn in a loudspeaker? Oh, everybody uh, that knew what they were doing used horns. The only thing is that... Uh, uh, The horn went out of style with the uh, with the acoustic phonograph. After all, they said we were squawking to the ground. No, uh, uh, no bass, no treble, nothing, just nothing but uh, mid mid frequencies. Well, that was uh, not the fault of the horn. It was the fact that the uh, the horns were too small. Well, hell, my first horn was. Uh, by, play, by, play, by placing it in a corner, it could be reduced in length to about uh, acoustic length of about four feet. But that, out of a corner, would have had to have been 16 feet long. Could you get it in the living room? No. One of the requirements of my first clip front was it had to go through a door. It did. You were telling Jim that you were listening um, with, a, with a friend from school and you were listening to the symphony on the radio. What, what would be the difference between listening to the symphony on the radio and when you built the clip horn? Well, he had a, he, he built his own speaker. It was a direct radiator, but it was a huge box about uh, uh, five by five by three feet. How many cubic feet is that? 25, 75 cubic feet. Uh, and he had uh, studied radio engineering under Frederick Terman at Stanford, had rebuilt his de detecting circuit uh, for lower distortion. Um, he had a power amplifier with uh, triode tubes and push-pull in the output stage and it would produce about five watts, five undistorted watts. Well, his sounded pretty darn good. Well, he, he loaned me a 12-inch speaker, which I built into a, a baffle to put in the corner. And my mother had given me the, I had given her a General Electric radio back in 1928. And she married again, and her husband bought her, bought her a modern, better radio. She gave me the old general radio, general general electric radio. And I ordered the detective circuits, the de detector circuits, and added a power amplifier consisting of a pair of triodes and push-pull. And I had a little distortion too. And uh, my 12-inch speaker was almost as good as Jim Sharp's 15-inch speaker because he didn't have in his in the corner. And I put mine in the corner, which just doubles the size, the effective size of the speaker. Dirty tricks. Well, how does how does music sound better? How did I what? How does music sound better on a clip loud? Why does the music sound better on a clip loudspeaker? In in a layperson's terms, like for me. 
when I the first time I heard music through a clip horn, I thought it sounded really clear. It clear. wasn't muddied by anything. Clarity. Mm -hmm. Freedom from distortion. Mm -hmm. uh, Well, you said that I know that you played in the band when you were when you were at Cal College. You played in the band, mm -hmm. so and and you said that um, that's where you kind of got your love of music from, and that you thought that you would put together the science and the music together. So I guess the assumption I'm making is that you built the speaker to make the music sound better. make it sound better um, distortion is what occurs in a sound, sound reproducing system it produces sound output that was not present in the input mm -hmm. distortion is uh, what should not be there uh, it's always there. The only thing is that if you can reduce it to the point where it's not all, where it's inaudible, inaudible or almost inaudible, it's improvement over the ordinary system, which has lots of distortion. Did Jim show you that um, this brochure that we dug up and it was talking about? Because everybody now is talking about center channels. And putting center channels in your system. Uh, say again. Everybody now is talking about center channels and putting center channels into your loudspeaker systems. But it looks like you were talking about uh, three speakers back in the 50s. You know, I wish that uh, people put they put dates on their catalogs, <laughs> uh, uh, including Flitch. Uh, this is so long ago, I wonder who, who the published this, who, who published this thing anyway. Uh, we've got a bunch of speakers here that we don't make anymore. Uh, what was your question again? Well, there's three speakers there. There's not just two. You were talking before oh, about... Oh, uh, yeah, you know, why don't I don't well, understand why people don't use three speakers if you need three speakers? Well, it costs uh, half again as much money as two speakers, and you have to have a power amplifier to run the third speaker. At home, I have a, a stereo amplifier to run my two flanking speakers, and a half a stereo amplifier, just one channel of it running the center speaker. What's the center speaker do? How does the center speaker make stereo correct as opposed to two speakers? For the average home audio system, uh, I don't know whether it's worthwhile or not. I think it's worthwhile in my living room because I subtend a large listening angle between the flanker sp flanking speakers, and without the center speaker, I have a hole in the middle. The center speaker um, focuses the soloist, if there is one. Uh, 